How wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to be discussing some really exciting discoveries from the center of the Milky Way, specifically the region extremely close to the central black hole that's sometimes also referred to as the central molecular zone. An extremely crowded, turbulent region that once again surprised scientists because of some of the recent observations and recent discoveries. And though for many decades we imagined this region to be a kind of a gravitational shredder, basically a place where a lot of stars get shredded apart and only dust and gas is left behind, mostly because of the extreme forces from the central black hole, turns out that this might have been incorrect. A lot of recent breakthroughs, especially in 2025, reveal an entirely different and much more complex picture, making this region way more bizarre than we imagined. And here we're talking about bizarre objects, cosmic tornadoes, rivers of gas, and even structures that seem to defy black hole itself. And so let's discuss some of these recent discoveries in a bit more detail, but I guess let's actually start with an exciting historical event that happened approximately a decade ago that finally told us that this region seems to hide so much more than we imagined. And this is something that began in the early 2000s. Here scientists discovered that a kind of a chunk of matter, referred to as G2, seemed to be approaching the black hole relatively fast. And that meant that this was supposed to produce something super exciting. Scientists thought that it's going to produce a massive explosion and a lot of powerful emissions, potentially even resembling some kind of a miniature quasar, because this is what we actually thought usually happens around central black holes. But G2 survived. As a matter of fact, absolutely nothing happened. There were no emissions, nothing was destroyed or emitted extra radiation, and the entire event was a kind of a nothing burger. And that's despite the fact that we're talking about a black hole that's over 4 million solar masses in mass, and the black hole that was supposed to tidally disrupt this object completely, at least based on previous simulations and previous mathematical analysis. But we also know that our black hole is actually surprisingly quiet compared to other black holes, and so scientists already knew that some of the predictions here may not be entirely correct. And so this idea of spaghettification may not really happen the same way all the time. And so in this major study published in 2025, that was actually just released a couple of days ago from when I'm making this video, by using new observations and by using what's known as ARIS instrument, Researchers behind the study provided a lot of additional explanations and a lot of additional analysis about this region and about peculiar objects referred to as G-objects, several of which have not been discovered over the years. And the findings were indeed quite surprising. Here it turns out that pretty much most of these objects seem to completely defy predicted spaghettification and destruction, especially that famous G2 object. Even though it was assumed to be maybe something like this, some kind of a gas object that might eventually get destroyed, or basically this was some kind of a fragile dust cloud, turns out that this is not correct. They all seem to have very stable orbits, and they barely get affected by the black hole. In other words, these objects might have been actually orbiting here for a very, very long time. And that means that these objects are even more unique and more unusual than we previously believed. Because they're so stable, it's now suggested that these are not unusual gas clouds, but instead seem to be actually stars embedded within a dust envelope, or essentially kind of like inflated stars, which might have a lot of dust orbiting around them, but that also hold this gas together as they orbit around the black hole. And so here several observations confirm that G2 seems to contain relatively similar brightness along its path, which is what you would expect from an object that's more star-like and not gas-like. With the additional observations of an object referred to as D9, or technically D9 binary system, confirming that this is indeed the first ever binary star discovered orbiting close to the central black hole. And while in theory it should not be possible, the tidal forces from the black hole should actually pull one of the stars apart and possibly cause the two stars to merge or fly apart. But the latest data shows that this seems to be completely intact and is also moving on a stable orbital path like other objects, with the results essentially suggesting that Sagittarius A star is way less destructive than we previously thought, making the galactic center an ideal place to study how black holes seem to interact with all sorts of different objects, even objects like X7 that you see right here, 
was discovered to be moving along the expected Keplerian orbit and not an orbit influenced by some kind of a tidal interaction. So essentially this study proves that many of these objects seem to have much more stable orbits than we initially thought and actually might be super old as a result. For all we know some of these objects have been orbiting here for millions and millions of years. And while objects orbiting the black hole itself, especially with a stable orbit, may be surprising, things get a little bit more hectic and more unusual as you move slightly farther away. The dust clouds surrounding the core seem to be way more chaotic. And so here, additional studies from April of 2025, mostly focusing on a slightly farther region that's more dynamic and much more turbulent, and the region that contains immense amount of gas, as you can see in this image, representing approximately 80% of all gas in a galaxy, reveal that here something doesn't add up again. So because of all of this gas, we would actually expect that some of it might start forming stars. Basically, whenever you have dense clouds, like any molecular cloud, we do expect a lot of star formation. But here's the puzzle. This region seems to form far fewer stars than predicted. And so recent studies by using James Webb Space Telescope that focused on Sagittarius C region, a giant stellar nursery located 200 light years away from Sagittarius A black hole, might have actually found some clues and possible solutions to why this is so. These images reveal never before seen details of very long glowing filaments that seems to contain hot hydrogen and resembles a bunch of spaghetti. And while this is a telltale sign that these structures are actually organized by very powerful magnetic fields. And so the strong magnetic forces in this case may be actively slowing down the collapse of the gas, which then stops stars from forming. And that's because normally, in a typical molecular cloud, normal star formation relies entirely on gravity to compress the gas so much that it then reaches critical density and new stars start to form as these tiny tiny overdensities. But here the magnetic fields are just way too strong. And they're also amplified by the motion of the gas swirling around Sagittarius A star black hole. And this prevents the gas from forming any clumps or overdensities and instead keeps the gas bundled inside these magnetic lines. With further studies from 2025 confirming that this phenomenon exists in a lot of other regions, including Sagittarius B1 and Sagittarius B2. And so while massive stars are forming here, they're just forming at a much slower rate than predicted. And once again, you can find all of the studies in the description below. And so in essence, this suggests that the central region around the black hole seems to produce stars in an entirely different way and potentially only produces a single generation of stars compared to the rest of the galaxy. As in, even if the stars go supernova, they don't result in the production of second generation stars yet, because the magnetic forces reshuffle the gas and only allow stars to form in very specific regions. But as a result of this, as shown in one of the recent studies, a lot of the dust and a lot of the gas here actually gets reshuffled, moved and redistributed so much that it makes this area extremely enriched in a lot of materials, with this whole area basically being kind of like a very large mixer. And so here, as a result of additional observations from one of the studies in the description, researchers also discovered a completely new kind of a turbulent structure inside the central molecular zone, representing very unusual, narrow, long filaments of gas they now refer to as slim filaments, which are actually described as these massive space tornadoes. And they seem to be very important because they're thought to be the engines driving the circulation of material inside this very chaotic environment. So here we're talking about very violent streams of gas that dissipate pretty quickly and end up releasing complex organic molecules and silicon monoxides into the rest of the interstellar medium. And so as these molecules cool down, they actually freeze back into the dust grains, effectively replenishing this whole region once again and creating a kind of a continuous cyclical balance involving depletion and replenishment. So almost like a water cycle, except that here we're talking about a molecular cycle inside the central region. And this is definitely not something we've seen before and not something anyone thought was possible. Which also suggests that maybe stars that do end up being formed here are actually entirely different from some of the other stars on the outskirts of the galaxy. But exactly how, we're not sure yet. But perhaps the most intriguing discovery from this region was made back in May of 2025. It was reported in this study that you can find in the description. And while well, this seems to be evidence for a multitude of protoplanetary disks, structures of gas and dust, believed to be the earliest stage of star and planetary formation, basically similar environments to the ones that eventually resulted in the solar system. And while well, most known disks are found near our solar neighborhood, 
but these new candidates are forming under the extremely high pressures and densities inside the central molecular zone, with the team officially discovering nearly 500 of them, and more than 70% seem to appear significantly redder than expected. Which is why they actually call them little red dots. Not the same phenomenon as discovered by the James Webb far, far away. And the reason why they're so red is actually because they're possibly forming planets. They might contain very small opaque structures, similar to a typical protoplanetary disk that would make these objects much more red, and that's because these disks usually absorb certain wavelengths, producing certain types of reddening. But it's also possibly that this is because of dust grains within the systems themselves that are approximately a few millimeters in size and that are basically blocking the starlight, making the star appear more red. Either way, hundreds of these objects seem to be in this location, suggesting that hundreds of planets are forming as well. And to some extent, this does redefine some of our previous explanations on how and where planets should be forming, because here we're talking about one of the most extreme parts of the entire galaxy. In theory, we should not be finding so many planetary objects, because this region is just too chaotic. But because of these observations, scientists also started to discover how this gas even gets there, and why so many stars and so many planets are being formed. Because turns out the central molecular zone seems to contain additional structures, in this case referred to as midpoint clouds, with one stretching over 200 light years and essentially acting as a kind of a hidden river of gas and dust. So this turbulent cloud seems to feed material from the rest of the Milky Way toward the very heart of the galaxy, which then builds all of these future stars and all of these future planets. So most of this gas seems to come from the outskirts and is sort of funneled toward the center by some of these additional structures. But exactly how this works is obviously still unknown. And then there is this, the enormous hot wind coming from the black hole itself. And so yeah, leave your space fart jokes in the comments. But basically this is something scientists have been looking for for a very long time. The very powerful wind coming from the Milky Way supermassive black hole that seems to form a bizarre cone shape. It sort of kind of looks like this. Here this is extremely hot plasma wind sweeping away from the center that's also interacting with the cold carbon monoxide gas spanning approximately 3 light years away from the black hole. With the winds driven by thermal radiation and magnetic effects that also very likely suppresses star formation near the black hole, but also makes the black hole itself currently inactive. It basically sweeps away all of the gas from the center, and so the black hole is just unable to consume more mass. And at the same time, this particular research also discovered that the spin of the black hole seems to be slightly misaligned with the rest of the galaxy. It's not entirely clear why, but this is why these emissions are also slightly misaligned. And since these outflows are always seen in other galaxies, discovering it right here in the Milky Way finally confirms a lot of observational evidence and a lot of theories, suggesting that we understand black holes pretty well and the black hole in the Milky Way is not that different after all. But this is still extremely powerful. We're talking about energy of 25,000 suns. So this is definitely coming from the black hole and not from anything else. But because this is a very recent discovery, we don't really know much else. With the last study I wanted to discuss, briefly proposing that this region might be a little bit more scary than we initially anticipated. And specifically here they proposed the idea known as the star grinder. A somewhat frightening idea suggesting that this region is populated by millions and millions of stellar mass black holes orbiting around the central black hole and essentially shredding everything apart with time. And if so, this would explain why there doesn't seem to be too many large stars orbiting around this black hole, because essentially all of them got completely destroyed over time. And so here it's not the central black hole that's destroying everything, it's hundreds of millions of different tiny black holes that may be in orbit around it. Now this is just a theoretical proposition, so we don't actually have any evidence yet, but it would definitely make this region maybe just a little bit scarier. But here we also have to remember that our understanding of this region and pretty much everything around the central molecular zone is a continuously changing process and has actually shifted dramatically in just the last five years. And that's because this is not just some kind of a random place in a galaxy. This is a place of immense gravitational destruction and chaos and seems to contain the highest density in a galaxy and very likely the most activity and most destruction. As a matter of fact, it also potentially contains some of the most powerful magnetic fields and some of the most powerful winds. Despite of this though, it still seems to have some star birth and even planet formation 
which is of course even more shocking. The planet part nobody expected at all. But because of these new instruments and new observations, we'll very likely have even more discoveries in the next few years, and so we'll definitely come back and discuss this more once there are some additional updates. Until then, check out previous videos on a similar topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM it directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. You can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.